everybody. Welcome back to Boys and Girls. It's your main map, Man of Machine, coming to you live from Summit Academy. In this video, it's going to be one of three parts, but it's going to have that we're talking about the interim three summary. So we're going to be able to summarize what we have learned from trimester three. So for the first one, it says which expression is equivalent to 8 to the negative 2 power times 8 to the 5th power to the 6th power. So make sure that you take this one part at a time. So when I have this part right here, again, I multiply, multiply exponents. And so I'm going to have, that's going to be 8 to the 30. And then I bring down the 8 to the negative 2 times 8 to the 30. And now I can add these two exponents together because they have the same base. So I do negative 2 plus 30, and I get 8 to the 28th, which is going to be that first choice. Then for number 2, it says which expressions are equivalent to 4, times, or four to the 8th power times 4 to the negative 5th power. So to make sure you're seeing that it has plural, so we're going to have multiple answers. So we're going to say, if I look at this one, I can do, let's say, 4 times, or sorry, 4 to the 8th power times 4 to the negative 5th power. I'm going to add exponents. We're going to say that's going to be 4 to the 8 plus a negative 5, which is going to be 4 to the 3rd power. So this is our goal, is to get this answer. So right away I can say, well, it can't be the first one, because, again, we're not multiplying the exponents together, we're just adding them. However, the second one is good, so we are going to pick that one, so that one looks good. Then for C, let's try that out. So let's see what happens when we have for C. So when we're dividing with the same base, we subtract, subtract exponents. So we do 4 to the 8th minus a negative 3, which is the same as adding 3, so that would be 4 to the 11th, which is not what we're looking for. Then for D, it already has 4 to the negative third, which is not what we're going to pick, so we're not going to pick that one. However, same idea, we're going to subtract exponents. So let's say subtract exponents. And so we have 4 to the eighth minus 5, which is the same as 4 to the third. And so we're going to say that one's good. And then this one is the same as multiplying multiply exponents. So this would be 4 to the negative 40th power, which is not what we're looking for. So for just this one, we have two answers for B and E. Then for number 3, it says the population in Colorado is approximately 5 times 10 to the 6th power people. The population of California is approximately 4 times 10 to the 7th power people. California has how many times more people than Colorado. So what we're going to have to do is take these two numbers and divide. So we're going to divide these two values. And so what that's going to look like is this. I'm going to have, I'm going to have 4 times 10 to the 7th power divided by 5 times 10 to the 6th power. So make sure, again, you can use your wonderful decimals calculator. So let me pull that up real quick. And I can move it like here, we'll say. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in exactly what I have. So I have a fraction, and I have in my numerator a 4 times 10 to the exponent of 7. And then I have in my denominator, I have 5 times 10 to the exponent of 6. So again, make sure you can divide carefully. Again, notice how they're, it's almost like they're dividing the two numbers together and then subtracting the exponents, but you should end up with just 8. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to 8. I say this equals 8. So 8 times as many people. All right, moving on to number 4. It says a scientist observed a bacterium in a microscope. It measured about 0. 0.000029 meter in diameter, which is the following which of the following is closest to this amount. So what we can do is let's try writing this in. So we're going from standard, standard form to scientific notation. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, I have 0.12345 to 9, 
oops, sorry, 2, 9. And what I have to do is I have to go in between these two numbers because, again, that number, when we have scientific notation, again, we have something like a times 10 to the power b, whatever it is. This number right here has to be in between 1 and 10. So it has to be at least 1, and it has to be less than 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. And what I can say is I have 2.9 times 10 to the negative 6 power because I get a negative exponent, negative exponent just means small number, which is what we're looking for. And if we're, so if we're trying to say, okay, this is going to be our answer, notice how none of them are that answer, but it's saying which is going to be the closest to that. Well, I can say that, okay, it's not going to be these two because those have a positive exponent. However, these two are going to be close to it, but I have to figure out which one is the closest. So I can say, well, that's going to be A, since if I'm looking at, if I would be looking at a number line, if I would be looking at a number line, I would say that, hey, if I have... Uh, 2 times 10 to the 6, or sorry, 10 to the negative 6, and I'd say here's 3 times 10 to the negative 6. I'd say this is going to be where my point is because it's going to be closer to this one here. Moving on to number 5, it says simplify the following expression and express your answer in scientific notation. So what we're going to do for this one is we can multiply these two numbers together. So if I multiply 4 times 1.6, I can get 6.4, and then I can have times uh, 10 to the 4th power and times 10 to the 5th power. Again, add those exponents because they have the, the same base. So let me say add exponents. And so I'm going to say that's going to be 6.4 times 10 to the exponent 9. And I can use my Desmos calculator to check. So let me pull that up real quick. So I said... I had 4.0 times 10 to the exponent 4 in parentheses, and then I had, I had 1.6 times 10 to the exponent of 5. So notice how it matches up exactly what we need. So always make sure you can check using your wonderful Desmos calculator. Right. Try to circle on that one more time. All right. Moving on to the next page. It says for number six. It says the graph of the system of equations is shown on the coordinate plane. What is the solution to your system of equations? And you need to write your answer as an ordered pair. So again, wherever they intersect, so we can say solution point same as point of intersection, meaning where do they cross, where do they meet, and we're going to say it's going to be this point right here, and we're going to say that's our solution point, or our point of intersection, and so we have to write it as an ordered pair, again, ordered pair is an x value, and a y value in parentheses. So we're going to say our point of intersection is going to be 2 comma negative 1. Again, make sure you put it in parentheses. Again, make sure you have your x value first and then your y value. For number 7, it says consider the system of equations below. Which statement describes the solution to this system of equations? So what I would suggest you do is graph in Desmos. That way you can see the picture. So I'm going to switch over to Desmos. Let me put the put it right here, we'll say. And I'll clear it out. Okay, so we're talking about the system. We have 2x plus 3y equals negative 60. And then we have our second line is going to be 2x plus 3y equals 120. And I don't see them right away, but what I can do is I can go over this little minus button, I can zoom out, so that way I can see my pictures. And if I notice, if I look at these two lines for these two equations, green and pink, 
I can see that they're going to be parallel lines. And so what does that mean for our answer? Well, when we look at these choices, we're going to say that they don't intersect anywhere. So let me write this down. So we're going to say they're para parallel lines, meaning no solution. I'll try it writing that separately. No solution. Because they don't have any point where they cross. So we're going to say it's going to be a C for that one. Then moving on to number eight, it's, it's considered the system of linear equations below. So it gives us this, these couple of equations. Again, make sure this is a five, so make sure you uh, change that to five. And it says, what is the x coordinate of the so solution to the system of equations? So just like before, graph in Desmos. Always graph when it gives you the equation. So what we can say is this, let me pull up our calculator again. Let's clear these two points out. So it has for the first equation, I have x plus 3 over 4, sorry, 3 over 4 times y equals 5. And then for my next equation, I have x equals 1 half times y. So let me hit that home button, get it back to normal. And if I see it, hey, it crosses at this point here, 2 comma 4. So I can say, If I look at this solution point, so I'm going to say, let me see this, I say solution at, and I say the point 2 comma 4. Again, notice how it's an x value and a y value, and it's only asking for just the x, so it's only asking for that 2, so I just say 2 for that one. So just make sure you're careful when you're looking at that graph and looking at that point. All right, moving on to the last one I'll do for this video. It says for number nine, the graph uh, below represents y as a function of f. And what is the output when the input is zero? So it's just asking for this. It's asking for that y intercept. Again, that's two things that it does. It's saying when x equals zero, what is your y intercept? And it's when the graph hits the y axis. We're asking what is going to be that point. And so what you can do is you can highlight your highlight your y axis. I can say, hey, where does our graph hit? Well, it's going to hit at this point right here. So we're going to say that right here is our y intercept. Intercept. So it's going to be at y equals 2. So we're going to say our the output for this one is just going to be two. So make sure you can ask questions as they come up. Be sure to check out the next part on part two. And as always, super send that subscribe button.